Hey everybody, I'm just going to do a quick little video over all my gear that I'm going to be hopefully bringing on my trip this coming weekend to the MRT slash NCT trail loop. Uh, this will be my first multi-day slash multi-night hike. Uh, granted, I only know it's, I know it's a, a couple miles, was like 20, 22, 25 miles or something like that. And I know some people can get it done in one day, two days even, but uh, my mom and I, we're going to try and stretch it out and just enjoy it for three days. We're going to go Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We get there Friday, come back Sunday. And this will be, like I said, our first multi-day hike. Uh, she's got her own gear and I'm going to go over you or go over my own gear with you guys. So we'll start with the basic, the pack. This is something I just picked up to replace my High Sierra 75 liter pack. Uh, this is the Field and Stream 65 liter. I got this from Dick's Sporting Goods. And apparently it's new. And I wasn't aware of that. It hasn't been out very long, at least for Dick's Sporting Goods. If it has, this is a newer model, I guess, because they told me it was new. It's got a typical top pouch thing. I'm not sure what this is specifically called, but that flap, <clears throat> excuse me, it is connected. It doesn't come off, like it doesn't clip off. I guess you could pull it off through these here, but it does have a button right there so they can extend it because there's a flap I'll show you this flap right here it lets you extend it and it's velcroed so you don't if you don't want to use it you don't have to but uh, to me I like that because then you know I don't have just this open space behind my neck it's covered in this you only have one top zip which is right right here and I'll be I'll be going over everything that I have that I keep in this pack and where I keep it at. So here's that top zip, and then on the underside there's another zipper. Not sure if you can see it. Probably not because my lighting. But there's a zipper right there, and it's in a small pouch. It holds a decent amount of things. And then you got the main opening here, and it's got that dual. That I guess that extension here, it, it comes out, but it's got that, you know, there's one tightening cord here and one tightening cord here. So if you want to, you know, have pack more, you can. And it's just one big hole. It does have that divider in the bottom because right here, right here is the uh, zipper for your sleeping bag area. Or if you want to just separate anything, it's got a, uh, uh, pull cord I know some of them have like a zipper that divides that bottom half this one's just got like a pull cord that you can cinch the the fabric shut and it'll split that inside and that holds everything that I need it to hold it's got all these straps and buckles it's got some loops on the bottom it does have I can move these straps you got this spacing here there's no like zipper here or anything or cinch cinch cords but it goes all the way through I'm, I'm guessing that you could put like a you could put like your trekking poles in there or something and then it's got the two side pockets right here which are quite huge And then uh, it's got two mesh water bottle pockets. Waist strap. This is my main reason for getting this is because um, my high Sierra is just huge on me. I'm six foot one and barely 150 pounds, and that thing just swallowed me up. So this is this one fits me a lot better. Also compared, this one's got the two poles right here and then this like your your straps actually slide along that and you can adjust it 
with a strap right here. I think it goes all the way down to 15 or 16 inches, all the way up to like over 20. I'm not sure about that, but it works for me. I got it since done right where I need it. And unlike my High Sierra, the High Sierra has got those stupid, uh, like, all, they have like fabric notches. And then you take like a Velcro piece right here in the middle and you set it where you need it. But all of your weight is pulled from that center point and it's not very stable. This is actually spread out like, I guess, some Kelties that I've seen. So that's nice. Uh, this doesn't have uh, hip pockets, so I got me one of these pouches and I just put it through this uh, strap right here. And then it still lets me cinch it down from my hip belt. But this is a Molly pouch and I keep uh, uh, my firearm in here. I mean, I would carry on my hip, but kind of hard to carry on your hip when you got this on your hip so I keep it right there um, this is my uh, what do you call it med pouch I guess you could call it I keep that on the other side I don't like keeping it in my pack just because you know if I want it I want to you know have it right in there this is actually a uh, eyeglass case or glasses case from uh, Walmart uh, they were on sale for like 50 cents or something like that clearanced out and it just Velcros around the back. And I've got everything that I would need on there for just a couple nights. Got my compass right there. And it's got these top loops so you can cinch something down on the top. And now we're going to get to the, the fun stuff, the actual gear. This is everything that I plan on bringing. All right there. And I don't know if you can notice. But I have everything laid out as if it was in my pack. So it's like this bottle is on the right side. This bottle is on the left side. This is on the bottom of my pack. Sleeping stuff, cooking stuff, and then it goes up the pack. And then this is where I keep it on one side. This one's on the other. And then that little area right there is where I keep it in the top pouch. And so forth. So let's go over everything. Let's go with the clothing first. This is not what's going to be in the pack. This is actually what I'm going to, uh, I'm planning to be wearing. I got my Solomon Quest 4D2 Gore-Tex boots. I just picked this up the other day, and this is an Eddie Bauer long sleeve um, rip stop polyester, really lightweight. It's got a mesh back. And then almost very similar material. I would say it's almost like the exact same material of a Columbia, I think it's Silver Ridge pants. They have the the zippered knee, so you turn them to shorts. And then I've got, in case I get chilly, my uh, Marmot fleece jacket. And then under underneath my long sleeve shirt, I'm going to have like a, a polyester t-shirt. And then let's start getting into what's in the bag. This is going to be what's in the little top pouch. The very top pouch of the bag is some gloves. In case I need to, you know, have gloves for anything. I believe I have my uh, merino wool buff in there. Buff, not buff, buff. A Cabela's fleece cap for either when it gets chilly or sleeping in a mosquito head net with insect shield I keep that in the top and then I also keep some spare batteries I probably don't need this many I should say I, I should not need this many but it, it barely weighs anything for me and I'd rather have them and not need them and then need them and not have them my lamp I thought about bringing a flashlight with my headlamp and I was recommended not to, but if I do bring a flashlight, it's just going to be like my uh, uh, pocket pen style flashlight, just something small. Spare fire starter. I think this is a light my fire kit. 100% or yeah, 100% max deet. 
Uh, this is that Gorilla repair tape. It's not like a duct tape or anything, but this is meant to do repairs on, like, say, a tarp, a hammock, or a tent, or anything such as that. Um, all that's going to be in the top. Then this stuff right here is going to be my left or right pouch. And you got biodegradable wipes. You got some hand warmers. You got some tissues. And you got some moist wipes, which are, you know, like antibacterial alcohol wipes or anything like that. And then on the left side. Oh, almost forgot. This will be in the top pouch too. This is my rain jacket. Uh, it's my Marmot. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a Marmot rain jacket. And that's packed into a, uh, a dry bag. Got some snacks right here. Spare uh, fuel canister, just a small one. And then here's my water filter. Uh, spare filter. Here's all the gizmos that you need. This is the little pouch it comes in, and this is what it is. Survivor filter, and it comes with a, like, that, like I said, that spare filter on the end. And about this filter, I haven't used it yet. I'm going to. I'm going to test it out definitely before I leave. It's all packaged into this, and it's rated, or it says it filters down to... Not saying you need this, but it filters down to 0 0.01 microns. And what I liked about that is that compared to other filters, like, uh, I think it's like Kaden, or I can't pronounce it, but it's like a K-A-Y something something style filter or Sawyer's. They only filter down to like 0 0.2, so that's 0 0.001 versus 0 0.2, granted. I didn't really like <laughs> go into the science of how small bacteria can actually get and whatnot, but it's just a peace of mind that that filters more so than one of the other brands. And I got that at a good price. It was originally like 150 bucks, I believe, and it was on sale for like 60, 60 to 80 dollars, I have to say. So that's nice. Um, we'll go back to here, and this is what, oh, I didn't go through that, I'm just all over the place, I'm sorry about this, uh, these are polyester micro fleece, small hand towels, uh, the blue one's a little bit bigger than the green one, and what I got those for is, uh, the blue one is going to be for me, like if I want to dry off my hands or face or even my body if need be, uh, that's what that's going to be for, but the green one, at least I hope that's green. I'm colorblind, sorry. Um, that's going to be for uh, uh, dishes or my cook my cookware pretty much. It's like rinse it off and I dry it with that. That way I'm not using food stuff on my body and my body stuff on my food stuff. So, all right. Now we'll go to what goes into the main pack, the big pouch. The yellow one right there, unless it's green, greenish yellow whatever that one is, that is my food bag, excuse me, um, that is my food bag right there, uh, I've got most of my meals in there, I still need to put some snacks, and then I've got some dehydrated fruit I'm going to be putting in there at the last minute before we leave. This is my Kelty Noah's Tarp 12, I love this tarp, I mean I can't say I'd, I, I can't say I love it just yet, but I had it set up outside, and then it's very, very nice. Uh, I got the 12-foot one just because I'm using the Skeeter Beater Pro, which I believe is like 10 and a half, 11 feet long, so I wanted to make sure I was going to be covered. And in that, I have all my paracord and uh, tent stakes. That's all in there to tie that down, so... There's no need to keep everything separate and in other pouches and whatnot. Skeeter Beater Pro. And then the Eno Atlas XL straps. They're the same thing as the Atlas straps, but they're just uh, extra large or extra long. This is a 
Camp Chef, it's pretty much like the same thing as a jet boil. It's the Camp Chef Striker 100, and everything is in there. Like I got my uh, stand, uh, a medium sized one of those, and then uh, I think that's it. I think I got some fire starting stuff in there as well. But it's that cook set. I got one of these cups here. This is a Walmart cup. And I do know I have some fire starting stuff in here. Like uh, cotton balls with Vaseline. And then uh, some matches, I believe. And even though this says a, it's a geocide, this is just a sleeve that I found. And I, I actually cut it and trimmed it. As you can tell, it's not the most perfect cut, but I slapped that on there and just makes it nicer. The cup itself is from Walmart, and the lid is actually from a Stanley uh, set that I had, but it fits that cup perfectly. And then we'll go down some more. And like I said, this is set up to where it is in my pack. So top of the pack, down to the bottom of the pack. And whatnot. Well, these items I might put like on top of the actual pack, like on the outside and whatnot, or they can go on the bottom. But for the most part, this is what's on top to the bottom. This is what I have divided in my sleeping bag area. This is what's in the left side of my pack, like on the, the left pouch, right pouch, and that little group of it, stuff right there, and that little group of stuff right there goes in the top pouch so anyways this these bags are actually uh, flip-flop this is a camp pillow I think it's by Coleman or Stan Sport I'm not sure but it compresses a lot better but um, I just opened it and it, it used to be down to like right here because it's in a, a folding dry bag this is um, the bag it originally came in but I couldn't compress it that much so I just kind of figured I'll put my uh, clothes in there, stuff that won't compress as easily as this pillow. So I just swapped them, and I have, what do you call them, long johns, I guess you could say. I got them when I was in uh, the Army, and they're called your waffle tops and bottoms. Uh, they're like long johns, but they're a little bit thicker. I'll be using those for sleeping in if it gets cold. And then I've got some extra socks in there, and I think that's it for right now. And like I said, that's the, the camp pillow, which will compress a lot more than that. And then this dry bag, this is actually my uh, sleeping bag. And originally, that sleeping bag was this right here, this little thing. Obviously, there's some size difference here. This is quite small. <laughs> Um, it might look bigger because I'm holding it closer to the camera, but this is very small. This is that Walmart uh, Ozark Trail 40 degree bag, but what I did was I'll hopefully try to input a picture or upload, upload a picture later, but what I did is I took that sleeping bag and then I have a, a Coleman's fleece sleeping bag. I mean, they, they label it as a fleece sleeping bag, but it can also be used as a fleece liner. So I took one of those and I put it inside that sleeping bag. And then inside the fleece, I took a very thin polyester sheet style liner that I got from Walmart as well and put that in there so that I'm not directly against the fleece. That way I'm not getting too hot, but it I'm hoping that brings it from like a 40 down to like maybe a 30 degree bag. So my other option is in my room over there and that's a, a huge zero degree bag that I, I absolutely don't need right now. Uh, I got my Nalgene bottles. These will be on each side. One will be on my left, one will be on my right. And those are little mesh pockets over there. These are my trekking poles. Uh, pretty much just Walmart cheapos. Uh, I got these from my mom as a gift. And here's my liner here, or not my liner, my sleeping pad, not liner. Uh, it's by Thermarest, or it says 
Ridge Rest Classic, but it says Thermo Rest right here, so I'm not sure. It sells at Walmart and Meyer. But when I said I was going to try and upload a picture of this, because what I found is quite nice, sleeping in the hammock, getting a cold butt is not fun. But it's also not necessarily easy to sleep in your sleeping bag and have a pad underneath you and have it stay there while in your hammock. And I don't have enough money for a quilt, so that's not even, that's not even going to be brought up right now. So what I did was, because I have this layered, I have this sleeping bag layered, is that in between the fleece and the polyester liner, I throw this guy. So you have the sleeping bag, the fleece liner, and then in between the fleece and the polyester goes this, and then I go into the polyester. So it's a nice layering system. And this will not go anywhere. It stays in the sleeping bag, so therefore... Wherever I go, this goes. Nice. But other than that, that's pretty much everything I have. I probably dragged this a lot longer than I should have, but I didn't really do any cuts or takes or anything. I just grabbed my camera and started rolling, and I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, you can consider this a shakedown if you want. If you guys want to comment saying, hey, that's either a good setup or, hey, you don't need this or you don't need that. That's fine, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, right now, I am not an ultralight hiker. I am just getting into this. This is all new to me. I mean, I've done a few things here and there, but I've never done a multi-day. And to me, this setup is okay. I mean, everyone learns from experience. Hence, now you guys are going to give me your opinions, which I'm looking for. But please don't criticize me for anything. Um, I've seen some people to where it's like, you know, you make a comment about, hey, this would be very nice to have. And someone comments, well, well, you know, pretty much why the hell do you need that? It's just pointless. You know, don't do stuff like that. You gotta understand, I'm new to this. So everyone starts at some point. So try to be fair. But that's everything. Uh, now these I'm debating about bringing. I got my Coleman camp knife here. Just a basic knife with a basic, uh, basic sheath. I've got my Gerber here. It's got the knife sharpener on the back, fire starter on the bottom. And this one's a little bit heavier. It's got a Kydex uh, sheath to it. I did take off the nylon sheath because I was going to try and strap it to the bag, but I might not. I may or may not bring one of these. I'm just trying to think of which one I'd want to bring if I do. If I don't bring one of these, this is a guidesman, pretty much a leatherman in essence. So if I don't bring one of these, I will be bringing this. And then for more water, I'm debating about bringing this Gerber Canteen. It's got that metal uh, metal cup on the bottom, so you can heat it up on a fire if you want. But I do have a hydration bladder, but that's also from when I was in the Army, and it's quite nasty and... I'd rather not buy a new one, and that one's a pain in the butt to clean out. So I'm debating about just using this and strapping it to my front buckle. So when I'm walking, it just sits right there. I'm not sure, but those two are primarily going to be used for cooking, uh, cooking water. Because uh, as everybody has told me about the MRT slash NCT trail, the NCT side, you have very little access to water. So that's what these two are going to be used for. And this one will be for my personal use. So opinions on that. Um, again, when it comes to weight, I'm not really worried about these guys right now. I have heard of people using smart water bottles just because Nalgene is quite heavy. But that's this is my first trip, so that's not something I'm really worried about right now. If it was a longer trip, then yes, that's something I might look into. But for now, I'm going to stick with my Nalgene. But I just need to figure out something for my personal water or personal use. But other than that, that is everything. There's the pack again. Go over. And all right. I hope you guys enjoyed. I do apologize for any mistakes I may have made or repeats that I may have done or hacks, coughs, sneezes or anything in between. 
Uh, I hope you enjoy it, and then I hope to hear some good responses from you guys. So have a good day. Happy hiking.